Jess Pierce for the 28th of July, 2017. This is the American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio. Weebly.com. And uh, yeah, so it's Saturday. <laughs> it's it's Saturday. What can I say? Let's uh, give you a week in review, shall I? Uh, lots of things are going on. I mean, I'm I'm as I always say things. It seems like things change every five minutes. So, uh, London mayor's threat to derail Brexit. Sadiq Khan vows to make staying in Europe a labor policy so it would, quote, trump the referendum result, unquote, if they win power. In other words, he's a dictator. What can I say? Head of Cambridge University Equality Group says, quote, all white people are racist, unquote, heaps praise on London rioters and shock, uh, shocking Twitter outburst. Ah, <sighs> Jesus. And Rance Priebus said, I resigned yesterday. Trump, quote, wanted to go a different direction, unquote. Accusations, I'm a leaker, uh, quote, unquote, is ridiculous. Uh, Quote, this is not like a situation where there's a bunch of ill will feelings, unquote. So, you know, he, he understands. He knows. Britain surrenders to NWO agenda. UK moves to restrict freedom of movement. Is America next? Oh, believe me, it will be. They're already talking about passports between states. Interstate passports. They're already talking about it. Okay. Apple is removing VPN services from China. Uh, From the China app providers, VPN allows users to bypass China's so-called Great Wall. Reuters is reporting this, and because this is tech, I'll tell you about it. 29th of, is this the 29th or the 28th? What is it today? The 29th. I said the 28th. I'm sorry. My, (laughs) I was wrong. It's the 29th. Yeah, I just looked at my calendar. And the uh, date on the article, the 29th of uh, July, 2017. Uh, Apple Incorporated, this is from Reuters, Apple Incorporated removing virtual private network services from its app store in China, VPN service provider said on Saturday, accusing the U.S. tech giant of bowing to pressure from Beijing to comply with stringent cyberspace regulations. Now, let me add a little piece of information to this. Wasn't... uh, wasn't uh, President Trump and Pre- Pre- uh, President Vladimir Putin accused of working together to try to develop a cyberspace type of organization to where they can crack down on a lot of this stuff? Hmm? Kind of a coincidence, dink as some people tell me. Um, VPNs allow users to bypass China's so-called Great Wall, a great firewall aimed at restricting access to overseas sites. Beijing has shut down dozens of China-based providers and it has been targeting overseas services as it bids to tighten its control over the Internet, especially ahead of the uh, Communist Party uh, Congress in August. VPN provider ExpressVPN said on Saturday that it had received a notice from Apple that its software would be removed from China App Store, quote, because it includes content that is illegal in China, unquote. In other words, China has a firewall, VPN, virtual, uh, what is that, the, uh, uh, I just saw it here. In other words, Users in China with this VPN software, virtual private network software, can bypass that firewall and get information out as well as in. China doesn't want that. China wants that completely shut off so where no one gets access to the Internet. That's what it's saying. 
Quote, we're disappointed in this development as it represents the most drastic measure the Chinese government has taken to block the use of VPNs to date, and we are troubled to see Apple aiding China's censorship efforts, unquote, Express VPN said in a statement. It says read more, so I'll put that on American Liberty Radio podcast. Um... I don't know why there's over a billion people in China. <laughs> okay. There's over there's a lot of people in China. Why are they so afraid to stand up to their government? I mean, granted stories out of China have said that dissidents have disappeared or worse. But why don't people, I mean, even a half a million people can change that government. Why don't they? Why don't they do that? Why don't, why, why, why don't people stand up for their human rights? Not just rights, God-given rights, but human rights. You know? I seem to think, now... Here, here's here's a postulation here. here here's something I want to throw out here. I seem to think that certain people, certain groups of people specifically, have this idea that if they if they're so in the in the small percentage minority, that they can yell so loud to get the mass of people, the vast majority of people, to cater to them. Okay, that's a thought that I have. Okay. I'm there. I'm I understand that. That is a that is something that is there. And I know this and I understand this and I and 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 it's there and I get that. I mean, it's happening in the United States of America where we have 535 congressmen and women controlling everything. Or I should say, conducting business the way that the controllers of Washington, D.C. want. So, we have that. We understand it. We live in that type of situation now. But in comparison to China, China has over... Let me, let me, I'll, I'll just go do this. Let me go to my browser. Let me click on a tab and let me type in what is the population of China. Right there. Here we go. I typed it in. As of 2017, worldometers.info, China, 1,388,000,000 people. This is from worldometers.info. China's population, 1.3 billion people. 1.3 billion people. Okay? You take even 1 million of those people and you go after that government and you shut them down. Because why are people, why, why are 1.3 billion people in China living under a communist regime? And the question has been asked, and I'll put this on American Liberty Radio podcast. The question has been asked, is communism all that bad? <laughs> My answer is Yes. It's kind of odd, though, that people would side with the principles of the New World Order than support other people's or their own God-given rights of freedom to be able to, you know, be an entrepreneur, have what they want, you know, protect themselves, whatever. But in communist countries, you can't do that. 
Let me move on. Zero Hedge is reporting on the 29th of July 2017, quote, Senate Republicans look like fools, unquote. Trump urges in to filibuster, <clears throat> claims Russia was against him in 2016. Not a bad start for a Saturday morning rant. After a turmoil-filled evening, President Trump is wasting no time this morning telling the American people via Twitter just how he feels about Russia, Republican senators, and the filibuster. With the mainstream media generally ignoring the ongoing DWS Awan Brothers debacle and shrugging off Fusion GPS involvement, Trump's first tweet of the day should open a few eyes, although probably not. Trump tweeted at real Donald Trump. In other words, Russia was against Trump in 2016 ele- election, and why not? I want strong military and low oil prices. Witch hunt. That's what he said. As a reminder, The Hill notes that the Senate Judiciary Committee heard testimony this week claiming that Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson and others evaded registering as foreign agents even though the firm worked on part of an influence campaign to overturn the Magnitsky Act, which was passed to punish Russia officials in 2012. There's more to that. And we have Trader... uh, yeah, I'm going to say it, Trader John McCain. He's not a to me. He's not a senator anymore. He's not a war hero. He's a traitor to the United States of America. Because here's here's why I say that, and you can go and look at all the information that's there, you know, regarding him and his vote in the Senate yesterday. Um, here's why I say that. Anybody that stands against the peace, freedom, liberty, and security for the nation, including including repealing a very, very bad health care bill that was signed into law by a previous president, is a freaking traitor. If you cannot look at the garbage and take the garbage out, and you think that the garbage is going to be beneficial for the area, you're stupid. In Congress, if you have a bill that is overburdened with uh, severe regulations and causing prices to increase for the general public and for the poor, and when I say poor, I'm talking anybody making less than 15000 a year, then you've got a problem on your hands. You've got a huge, huge problem on your hands, and you need to get rid of it. And who, and, and you need to get rid of the people that, put that bill into place in the first place and you need to get rid of all those little strings that are attached to them and you need to get rid of that bill now why do i say john mccain is a traitor because of the fact that he wants well i'm gonna say this and i have nothing to prove this but most of your senators and representatives get kickbacks from Big Pharma, Big Agra, you know, Big Business, all that. They get kickbacks. And I'll tell you why. When you become a congressman or a congresswoman, you you start out making $174,000 a year. Why in four to eight years, why are you considered a millionaire and making two to three million dollars a year? It's because you're getting kickbacks from these people who want you to pass, who want you to develop with them a, a bill that would make them immune from all laws and all, you know, criticisms everywhere, such as the Patients Affordable Care Act, uh, otherwise known as Obamacare. And when it becomes overburdened, Chances are people are going to go, no, we don't want that anymore. And they're going to kick it to the curb and they're going to throw it away and get rid of it. Well, have you noticed when you follow the money that some of these people that supported it in the beginning know that the people are going to get pissed off. So they vote or they use their influences in cash to invest in things that are going to make them a profit if it fails. Not only healthcare, that's with everything. Do you see how this works? They invest, make it work. People get pissed off or they put it into play and make it a law. They, they invest, make it a law. People get pissed off. 
the popularity of that whole thing starts to fail. All those things connected to it begins to fail. These people that invested initially invested in it, the big business and the elites and all that who put it all together to foist it upon you, these people then invest in its failure and they make billions of dollars on the back end giving a few of those bucks to the senators or the representatives that put it in in the first place. That's how the money works. <laughs> you know, John McCain is right in the middle of that. And I i don't, like I said, I don't have any proof of this specifically to him. But if it fails, he makes a few bucks. I think. So can somebody vet that and find out if that's true? Because I don't have any proof on that. But when you look at all the in quote unquote investments, the political contributions, when you look at all of that, just connect the dots and follow the money. Like I said before, I don't know everything, but makes sense to me. So when you look at things like the Patients Affordable Care Act, that's what it's called. I don't want to call it Obamacare or Trump Care or whatever. It's Patients Affordable Care Act. We need to get rid of it. Repeal, replace. I'm I'm on this, I don't always agree with Rand Paul, but on this I agree. We need to just get rid of it and repeal it and replace it with something else. But here's the ultimate goal, which I think should be number one on every person's list, is government getting completely out of health care. Because the states can do it, and the states can work with one another to keep prices low. It doesn't need a centralized government to tell them, well, we need to do this, this, and this. All, all, all centralized government in Washington, D.C. is doing is making a profit off of your hard work and on the backs of those people that have that health care that they provide. They're making a profit from it. Okay. That that's that's how it works. A lot of that stuff if you look at the healthcare quote unquote government run healthcare, all of that is a trust. It has nothing to do with making a profit. Has nothing to do with making, you know, you better. No, 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 no. When I say it doesn't, you know, have anything to do with making a profit in its core, no. But the people surrounding it that support it, that, you know, do all those exchanges that are now failing miserably in the U.S., those people make profits on the failure of the system. They put it in, they do the, you know, I, I, I explained that before. They do this. It's what they do. They know how to do this. If you and I made a, a reasonable investment in a company we knew that was going to, you know, fail, we'd lose our money. If we knew it was going to fail, why would you invest in, in it anyway? But we don't know, right? So these congressmen are the recipients of all this investment money from different big, you know, elites and all that, not for the purpose of making a profit off of the success of whatever bill or law they put into place. They make it on the failure of that law. Look at all, let me just take you back to the Obama administration. He set up or had set up all these exchanges all over the country, which are now failing in mass numbers Somebody's making money on that failure. You see what I'm saying? So, what does this have to do with John McCain? He's making money on a failure. I don't have proof of that, but if you follow the money and connect the dots, chances are he's making a few bucks on its on that uh, on that uh, legislation that was supposed to repeal the uh, Patients Affordable Care Act. It didn't pass. 
I think he's making a few bucks. Again, I don't have proof on that specifically for him. I, I don't have proof. But chances are he is making a few bucks. Okay. I just don't I, I don't I don't understand why people can't see it that way. The other insane <laughs> <laughs> the the other insane piece of news that's out there, which I think is incredib- incredibly stupid for this government to do, 29th of uh, July 2017, Reuters is reporting Donald Trump to sign Russia sanction bill. Moscow retaliates. The legislation was in part uh, a response to conclusions by the U.S. intelligence agencies that Russia meddled in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. This is from Reuters. Donald Trump will sign legislation that imposes sanctions on Russia. Then uh, the White House said on Friday after Moscow ordered the United States to cut hundreds of diplomatic staff in retaliation for the measures and said it was seizing two U.S. diplomatic properties. That's what communism does, folks. It just seizes whatever they want. They don't give you a chance to do anything. With peace, freedom, liberty, and security in the Constitution of the United States of America, we have we have the opportunity to uh, redre- uh, you know redress of grievances to the government. So we have that opportunity. Oh, in communist countries, they don't have that. We're going to take what we want, and that's the way it is. You're just going to have to suffer. Okay, I could be wrong on that. Somebody uh, enlighten me on that. Moscow's decision, which had echoes of the Cold War, was announced by the foreign minister on Friday, a day after the U.S. Senate overwhelmingly approved new sanctions on Russia. The legislation was in part a response to conclusions by U.S. intelligence agencies that Russia meddled in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, which they didn't, it's totally false, and to further punish Russia for its annexation of Crimea in 2014. I can understand that part, but the 2016 U.S. presidential election meddling and all, that's that found out to be totally false, and it's totally bull crap. so don't even believe that crap. It says read more, so I'll put this on American Liberty Radio podcast. I don't... <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying not to rant. I'm trying, trying not to, uh, rant on the whole Russia thing because it's just pointless. The, um. Sorry, I was just, a uh, headline caught my eye. Before I go, well, I'll do this. Um, Daily Mail is uh, reporting on the 29th of July, 2017. Head of Cambridge University Equality Group says, quote, all white people are racist, unquote, heaps praise on London rioters in shock of Twitter outburst. And I should say in shocking Twitter outburst. The student head of the Cambridge Equality Group has claimed that all white people are racist after praising rioters in Dalston who lit bonfires and hurled petrol bombs at police. Jason uh, Okundaya, sorry, I don't care, who runs the Black and Minority Ethnic Society at the Elite Institution, posted the shocking tweets amid violent protest in East London last night over the death of Rashan Charles. He said that white people had colonized Dalston and ordered them to go back to areas such as Exeter and Solisthurst. Yeah, it says read more, so I'll uh, put that original article up there because from the Daily Mail. I don't want to rant on that one either. When people are living in a blinded society intellectually, you get this dystopic view of, or I shouldn't even say dystopic, you get this narrow-minded view, and that becomes your, your whole narrative in your own personal space. And you don't want to know anything else. 
you don't want to break out of that that you you don't want to break out and learn other things okay you don't you you just don't okay you're narrow minded you're it's pointless to ever from your point of view to ever want to learn anything outside of that little space that you're in you become delusional you become less educated not so much uneducated but less educated because you don't want to learn anything else because you think that your thought is always right there and that's the only thing that you'll ever you know know and you think that everything is just that well it's not so to all those people um yeah to all those people that are like that i'm gonna say this you're dumb you are the stupidest person on the face of the planet and frankly i don't really give a crap what you think i've dealt with people like you more and more over the years and i gotta tell you (laughs) I'm even amazed that you can even put two words together or more than two words together to have a sentence. You know what I mean? I, I just I, I just don't get enough, man. I, I've had quite enough of the bull crap. Literally. Just I, I'm 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 just I laugh in your faces because you're dumber than dirt, okay? that That's just, I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm just not. You, you, it's just, I told you in 2014, I think it was around there, that uh, I'm not going to pull any punches anymore. I'm not going to, well, you know, you got to be nice to people. I don't have to be anything to people. I'm going to be honest and truthful, and if I see something stupid, I'm going to call it out. That's just the way it is. I mean, I don't I don't pussyfoot around. Well, you're going to offend a lot of people. I don't care. If I If I offend someone, it's not my problem. If I tell the truth and the facts and they get offended by that, it's not my problem. It's theirs because they, they're less educated than they should be on the, the facts that are there. I, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to say what I say. If you don't like it, I don't care. You know? Well, you're going to drive a lot of people away from your show. No, I'm going to bring people to the show that want to know the truth and the facts. Those that don't want to know, they can go elsewhere and do whatever. You know, I don't, I'm done with them. Oh, God. My nose, my nose, my nose. Folks, I'm going to take a little break. And uh, I'll be back in a a few minutes. Don't go away. This is, don't go away, dude. Uh, This is American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com And uh, yeah, I shall be back in a little over two minutes. Don't go away. The reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com Check out Late Night in the Midlands with your host Michael Vera at LateNightInTheMidlands.com Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Go to late night in the midlands.com. The world as we know it has been turned upside down. The leaders are faced with possible annihilation from their enemies. The United States is at the brink of a total collapse. 
This is the reality we live in. What can be done? The truth. The facts. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com History of America abridged. Excuse me? That's right. The History of America abridged. Nova Center for the Performing Arts presents The History of America abridged. Who really discovered America? Why did Abe Lincoln free the slaves? How many Democrats does it take to screw in a light bulb? What? Nova Center for the Performing Arts will answer those questions and more. I hope so. They will. May I continue? Yes. That's The History of America Abridged, presented by Nova Center for the Performing Arts. For more information about dates and times and tickets, contact Nova Center for the Performing Arts on their website at www. Dot NovaBillings.org How you doing, folks? This is American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio. Weebly. Com. American. LibertyRadio.Weebly.com Yeah, like that music? Ethan Maxwell, Maxwell. Driven to Madness. It's Ethan Mikesell, Driven to Madness. You can find that on YouTube. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. How are you, folks? <laughs> How are you doing on this 29th of July, 2017? At the beginning of the podcast, I said it was 28th, and I oh, know it's the 29th. Holy crap. <laughs> couple more days it'll be my birthday i quit having those when i was like 30 <laughs> this is like turn 30 i'm like well screw it i'm, I'm done i don't want it anymore <laughs> you know so yeah so yeah it was uh yeah it was interesting man my birthday coming up on monday actually yeah and if you are a uh, follower and a friend on facebook you'll know that so yes so, anywho, let me get back to the news, shall I? Yeah. Trump said on the uh, the Washington Free Beacon, uh, freebeacon.com, uh, is reporting on the 29th of July, 2017, Trump, we will find, arrest, jail, and deport, quote, every gang member and criminal alien, unquote, quote, I have a simple message today for every gang member and criminal alien that are threatening so violently our people, unquote. There's a video involved. I'm just going to put that up there, folks. Put that up there on American Liberty Radio Podcast for you guys. I believe that he can do it, too. I believe it should be done. I believe that every criminal alien needs to be packed up, shipped off to prison or to another country and just left to their own devices and deal with the risks on their own. We need to close the freaking borders. That's it. Hey, militia. Hey, 
National Guard governors who are down there in the southern parts of uh, the United States, like California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, including Louisiana, including Georgia, including Florida. Uh, close your damn borders, okay? That I mean, if you want to change America for the better, I don't I, it just... If you want to change America for the better, the only way you're ever going to do that is if you close the damn borders. Okay? It's just the way it is. Uh, It's just, that's just the way it is. I don't know why people insist on on keeping the borders open. I really, really don't. I I just, I don't. I, I, I don't, I just, I... There are farmers in Texas, and if you go down there or talk to people down there, if you know people down there, there are ranchers down there that part of their property is in Mexico. If they want to make some money, they should rent that piece of property to Mexico. You you want to make, there you go. I mean, if you can, legally, if you can do that, if you want to make some money, yeah, go ahead, rent that piece of property that's hanging over in Mexico, rent it to Mexico. Why not? Got to go through the State Department, got to do this, got to do it. No, screw it. Just rent it out, man. There you go. Close the damn borders. I was being sarcastic and renting that piece of property in Mexico. Just close the border. Just go down there. Oh, by the way. Oh, 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 oh. Here's why part of the reason why the southern border is open and why all borders are open. Here is part of the reason why. If you look at, and I'll, I'll find this right now as I'm speaking, if you look at the borders uh, of the United States and from Canada, Mexico to both coasts, you will see a constitutional free zone all around the United States of America, okay, you will see that, all right, it's there, and I'm going to put that up on American Liberty Radio Podcast for you to check out, I don't like this group, never have, never will, because I think they're, uh, uh, let me go find, uh, b- 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 let me see, let me go find something else. Yeah, it's, um, I'll do this too, but the, um, I'm trying to find a picture I just put up. I saved it to a file, and now I can't find a damn thing. There it is. Okay. Um, but there is a constitutional free zone around the United States of America. Okay, and I'm also going to put this other link in the comment section down below. Uh, I just posted it on uh, American Liberty Radio podcast. Now there's a that's from the ACLU this constitutional this map you'll see the map it's on an American Liberty Radio podcast this other group called constitutioncenter.org is saying does a constitution free zone really exist in the United uh, in America Scott Bomboy uh, February now get this the 15th of February 2013 he posted this so there's if you can find something newer that's great 
Is there really a government law that disallows the Fourth Amendment for 200 million Americans? Some people say it's true, but reasoning behind a 100-mile, quote-unquote, constitutional-free uh, zone ar- uh, argument is confusing at best. The American Civil Liberties Union has been saying since 2010 that a regulation allowing customs and immigration agents to search electronic devices at American borders without cause is wrong. Two years prior to that, the ACLU also warned of a 100-mile U.S. border called Constitution Free Zone where such searches could occur. So that's even in the comment section. That link to that, what I just read, is in the comment section of what I just put up about the Constitution Free Zone. The, um, I I just, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you, folks. We need to close the damn borders, period. End of sentence. You're an isolationist. If you're interpreting keeping America safe and, 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 you know, standing on the principles of the rule of law of the Constitution to have peace, freedom, liberty, and security in the nation, you're a freaking idiot. You know, if you're misinterpreting me and saying that I'm an isolationist, (laughs) you, you just don't know, do you? You know, I, I, I call it, I call it, I call it as I seize it, Okay. It is what it is. For far too long, we've had illegal aliens just come waltzing right over the border. We've had drug cartels build tunnels underneath the border. By the way, there's hundreds of more tunnels nobody has ever found, but they're there. Um, go look in the Gallus. Go, go look up there and all that and specifically on the south uh, southwest corner of Texas and up in you know New Mexico and all that area we uh, there's been tunnels found in near San Diego near the border you know so i mean come on and in Arizona i mean they're there you know so there's been tunnels found i'm sure there's a hundreds more tunnels across the southern border but drug cartels use that and and develop ways to get their you know people to get people over and these drug cartels make money off the backs of these people because they you know say it's going to cost you and then even the higher ups in the drug cartels know how to fake documents and do all that and get people in here and uh, the whole nine yards you know everything i mean you name it it's been done and it is being done so we have to literally Close the border, period. I don't care if we put 100,000 military National Guard troops on the border and we back them up with 50,000 militia members. I, I don't really care. We need to close the border. Why? It's very simple. It is true, yes, they come here and steal our jobs, period. Because companies don't want to pay us the money we need to you know support ourselves with the constantly rising you know, cost of living that apparently is, you know, uh, happening almost every year. In other words, big business doesn't want to pay you and I the money we need to live. Not, not extravagantly, but just pay the rent and pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to pay us any more money, you know, than that. And we can see how devastated it is when they start to pay us more money when the government comes along and says, you have to pay people X amount per hour. Seattle, $15 an hour. California, $15 an hour. Both those cities, Seattle, Washington, and and cities in California, specifically Sacramento and around, and even Southern California, $15 an hour, those businesses have closed. They, they, they've gone out of business because they can't pay people that much money. They can't. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is, is what I was talking about before, where illegal aliens cross the border to steal our jobs. Why? Because they take that money and they send it back to Mexico. They send it back to their families in Mexico. And when you look at how much money is leaving the United States, not being used in the United States, but leaving the United States towards Mexico. 
you want to know why the borders aren't closed. Seriously. It's just, it's that bad. And let me do this. Since I like to give you uh, information, let's do this. How much money is leaving the U.S. through or by illegal aliens working in the U, uh, U.S.? How much money is leaving the U.S. by illegal aliens leaving uh, working in the U.S.? I hit enter. And what do we have? The Pew Institute is a research center is saying stuff. NPR is saying stuff. Well, let's go to NPR. The National Public Radio, where they talk whisper things to make it sound more important. (laughs) 10th of February, 2017, Nurith Azimam. Sorry, don't know how to pronounce your name, but it's over at npr.org. Mexicans in the U.S. are sending home more money than ever. Migrants from Latin America and the Caribbean are sending more money to their families back home than ever before. These annual remittances, that's in quotes, as they're called by analysts, topped, get this, $69 billion dollars. In 2016, according to central bank data compiled in a new report by the Inter-American Dialogue, a Washington, D.C.-based think tank, the money has been a lifeline for the national economies of many countries in the region since at least the 1990s, when Manuel uh, Orozco, a political scientist who authored the report, first began tracking remittances. They climbed steadily since then, only to plummet when the Great Recession hit the United States in 2008. But they began to rise again in 2012. The 2016 tally is the biggest amount on record, and an increase of nearly 8% over 2015. This is going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. Okay? Somebody's got a diesel engine outside of the studio, which is really, really, I don't know, whatever. They do that all night long. I don't know who goes back and forth all night long, but it's really, (laughs) it's just, I don't know what they're doing, but hey, have fun. So there you go. It's on American Liberty Radio Podcast. It's from NPR.org. Mexicans in the U.S. are sending home more money than ever. More money is leaving the United States through illegal aliens than we are making in the United States as just you and I, you and I per capita, I think crunch the numbers. I don't have them in front of me. Crunch the numbers and let me know. Um, PewResearch.org. I'll put this up too. five facts about illegal immigration in the United States. One, there were 11 million unauthorized immigrants in the United States in 2015. Thank you, Obama. Mexican, number two, Mexicans no longer uh, be the majority of U.S. unauthorized immigrants. Somebody better learn how to work their grammar. Number three, the U.S. civilian workforce includes 8 million unauthorized immigrants, accounting for 5% of those who were working or were unemployed and looking for work. Number four, six states account for 59% of unauthorized immigrants. (laughs) Take a wild guess as to who they are. You don't have to. I'm going to tell you. California, Texas, Florida, New York, New Jersey, and Illinois. Number five, a rising share of unauthorized immigrants have lived in in the U.S. for at least a decade. I'm putting that on American Liberty Radio podcast. Excuse me, my nose is just driving me nuts, man. Just the facts, ma'am. Remember that show, Dragnet? There needs to be a huge, massive dragnet of illegal aliens, and I don't really give a crap what people say. Close the damn frickin' borders. I'm tired of it. How much does illegal immigration cost to you? This is from amac.us. 
AMAC, Association of Mature American Citizens. 17th of September 2016, unlawful immigration and amnesty. Current unlawful immigration can pose large fiscal costs for U.S. taxpayers. Government provides four types of benefits and services that are relevant to this issue. This is from the 17th of September 2016, almost a year ago. Direct benefits. These include Social Security, Medicare, unemployment insurance, and workers' compensation, which they haven't worked. They're here illegally. They don't work, and they're getting this. We want that. That's why we need to close the damn borders. We want to want to save some money? Means-tested welfare benefits. There are over 80 of these programs, which at a cost of nearly $900 billion per year, provide cash, food, housing, medical and other services to roughly 100 million low-income Americans. Major programs include Medicaid food stamps, the refundable earned income tax credit, public housing, supplementary security income, and temporary assistance for needy families. Public education at a cost of $12,300 per pupil per year. These services are largely free or heavily subsidized for low-income parents. Population-based services, police, fire, highways, parks, and similar services as the National Academy of Sciences determined in its study of the fiscal cost of immigration generally have to expend as new immigrants enter a community. Someone has to bear the cost of that expansion. The cost of these governmental services is larger than many people imagine is far larger than many people imagine. For example, in 2010, the average U.S. household received $31,584 in government benefits and services in these four categories. This is going up on American Liberty Radio Podcast. Close the damn borders. And tell Mexico, you either do something now or we'll do it later and you won't like it. That's just the way it is. They're not going to like anything we do anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say this, and and I've heard this. I'm I'm not saying I don't believe this and I don't believe this should happen. So I'm going to clarify that right now and, and <laughs> put a disclaimer on what I'm about to say. But I've heard this. I've heard people say we need to take at least a a vast number of National Guard military here in the United States, call them all up for a one-year extension, call them up to active duty for at least two years, and invade Mexico. That's what I have heard people say. We need to invade Mexico. We need to get rid of all the drug cartels. We need to bomb the crap out of them. This is what I hear. Not because these people are racist. Not because of anything other than the fact that these illegal aliens come over here funded by the drug cartels to infiltrate all of these drug gangs to get the drugs into the system. Now, oh wait, hold on here. That wouldn't be possible because of the fact that that our own government is supporting these drug cartels through different clandestine organizations and different ways of doing things. Why do you think they call it black projects in the United States? It, It literally, we have the most corrupt country or government in the world. Our country is inundated with people from all over the world specifically Mexico, but all over the world, they come here, terrorist cells are already here, the FBI and the CIA have already funded them and they're here. Why are they doing this? Because the members and the creators and the quote-unquote CEOs of the New World Order want the United States to be a third world dictatorial nation just like everything else in the world. In other words, we are the most advanced technology-wise. We are the most advanced country in the world, aside from China and Japan. And 
we can do more damage to all of these enemies that we have than we can imagine, really, because there's more technology out there that we're not seeing. So the members of the New World Order want to shut that down so that you and I can be enslaved in a, dis- uh, in a, in a tyrannical system of their design. So we can't move anywhere. We can't do anything. We can't do. No. They already want Chinese style internet in the United States. Okay. They, that our federal government wants a Chinese style internet in the United States. They've already got the kill switches. What I call the kill switches. They're already there. They're already there. Cable companies, you're like here at Spectrum or whatever cable company you're dealing with, they've already made agreements with the federal government, or some of them have, not all of them. Some of them have made agreements with the federal government that if it gets too much, in other words, if there's too much dissent against the federal government, the federal government can come along and just shut those places down and your internet's gone. They'll just kill, flick the kill switch and you're done. You can't get out anywhere. Same thing with your cell phone. Go look at the 1996 Telecommunication, uh, Telecommunications Act of 1996 and look at all the other amendments that go along with that, including those amendments which allow the cell phone companies to open up a back door to your cell phone to the federal government so that they can spy on you. Hey, hello, Google Earth. Hello, go to history.google.com. Go there. Look at all of that. They're tracking your ass, and you're happy about having the newest cell phone. I just, I don't know why people don't see the obvious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I just, I don't see why. I, I, I just, I don't understand it. I do, I do understand people's reluctancy to accept it. I, I do understand that. that. That's, I mean, that's obvious. But to just blatantly ignore it. And not accept it? Yeah. Who's the mentally ill one now? Who's the, you know, I mean, I'm, I say that with sarcasm oozing out of me. But the fact of the matter is, is most people who ignore the obvious, who just cannot stand the facts that, you know, this government is not the way their great grandparents uh, saw this country or anything of that nature. And it's not as free as we thought that it was. And people cannot accept the fact that the mainstream propaganda media is lying to them. These people are completely, they have a complete mental disorder. And there's absolutely no way for them to ever come back from, uh, come back from the other side of idiocy. There isn't. Because they are so geared to believe that everything they see in their mainstream propaganda media is the truth that they're not going to accept anything else. And that's, I don't feel sorry for them. What? If you're smart, you'll help them. No, I won't. Because they're not going to even pay attention. So anyway, that's my two cents worth on that. If you want to know more, ask. More than happy to tell you anything you want to know. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. Um, it's that simple. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And uh, check out uh, American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. Folks. I'm out of here. I got I got <laughs> I got things to do, folks. 
American Liberty Radio Network on Spreaker.com, on iTunes, and Google Music, so check it out. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com, sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS.